Hello dog lovers, uh, welcome to another live show. It's so stressful all the time to start a live show because you never know if things are working or not. Welcome to the show. Hopefully you're doing well. My name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer. I also coach dog owners. In this live video, I'm going to talk about dogs. We're going to talk about dogs. I'm going to answer your dog related questions and I'm going to start with the topic of whether it's a good idea to get a dog or not for you if you're ready to have a dog. Uh, I'll explain in a moment. But if you're new here, welcome. Uh, if, you, if this is your first time, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. I have been going live uh, recently twice a week, uh, Tuesdays at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also post a new video every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so now that you are caught up to what's going on, uh, I'm going to start to <clears throat> way to uh, our um, everybody's on board everybody comes ar around and I also wanted to share with you a common question that I get uh, and this was uh, uh, sent today I always wanted a dog but uh, I work nine to five live home at eight get home at six and walkers and daycares are really expensive in London don't get how other people do it. Feel like I have to be either rich or unemployed. So I wanted to actually talk a little bit more about this topic, you know, whether you sh you're ready to have a dog, whether you should get a dog or not. Uh, and, you know, that, that topic uh, in general, I think one of the things that uh, we feel, you know, in, in a way is that, uh, we need to um, have a dog because we want to have a dog. We need to have a dog. And um, are you ready to have a dog? Is it a good idea actually now, especially now that we have this uh, thing as a, uh, you know, the epidemic going on around the world and people are quarantined or staying at home and uh, they have more free time to spend with their dogs, is it a good time to get a dog? So let's talk about this first, and then as the questions come, uh, I will uh, answer all your questions as well. Meanwhile, Tam Star is on board, uh, is online, and saying hi, hi, Tam, uh, thank you for being here. You are one of my uh, committed uh, viewers, and that's very good to see you here every time. Uh, the DRF3156 is here as well. Happy Friday, happy Friday to you. And also Saber Dog is here, is here. I got here this time, very good. And we also have Elizabeth Crusoe here as well. Welcome all of you, thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for joining me in this, uh, Beautiful Friday. It's a beautiful Friday here. It's first of the month. I can't believe that four months, one quarter of the year is already gone. It's May 1st and it's looking different. It feels different. And, you know, it's, it's sound, it feels like, you know, we've been doing and going through this forever for a long time. So, it's kind of challenging to be uh, running a business and living. Um, for those who don't know uh, about me, I also have a doggy daycare. So you if you hear uh, dogs barking on the background, because that's because I own and run and operate a doggy daycare here in North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's called Jonas Art Doggy Center. At the moment, we have very few dogs. Very few dogs are attending our daycare due to coronavirus and COVID-19. And what has happened is uh, I still get to come to work, hope, luckily. You know, that's one of the positive things that I think it's kept me sane and 
in focus is that I am coming to work, you know, creating videos, creating content, uh, working with dogs, playing with dogs, having some business going on. But I could I couldn't I can't imagine you know staying at home and uh, being at home locked up. It's going to drive me crazy. I hope you're doing well and you're staying home. Probably you're staying home and you're taking care of everything at home. So that's the topic that I wanted to talk about, whether it's a good idea to have a dog, to get a dog at that this time. And the, the comment that came through yesterday, it's one of the comments that I always get, you know, is it okay for me to go to work and leave my dog home alone and then, um, you know, have a dog? Is it is it okay? You see, the problem is that number one problem is that uh, we have dogs are um, dogs are social animals, right? Um, and they always want uh, to have somebody uh, to be around somebody, right? You, it's very unnatural and very difficult uh, for um, for dogs to be left home alone or to be alone in general. And when you leave a, a dog home alone, it creates and uh, helps the dog to develop mental, uh, emotional, even physical issues. I'll talk about it a little bit in details, but thing is that when dogs are left home alone, it's unnatural for them to be in that environment alone. And as a dog lover and dog owners, you know, at this time we have the opportunity because we have free time, we are home, we think, okay, it's a good idea to have a dog. But the thing is, if we go back to reality and go back to our, our normal life, and we start going to back to work eight to 10 hours a day, then your dog is gonna be staying home alone almost 10 hours a day, which is very unnatural for dogs to be living like that, to be staying like that. And this will cause, you know, one of the reasons now, people they'll tell me, uh, then why is it, what am I supposed to do? You don't want to be one of the reasons that we are developing and helping dogs to develop bad behavior, be behavioral issues. Most of the behavioral issues that are are being developed and are developed in dogs is due to uh, the fact that dogs are taking away some of the needs that they have and socialization is one of their needs. So if you know, don't know me or if you know me, you know I work with this formula, around this formula, uh, you have to provide a dog's daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and also affection. So a dog needs to have these five essentials provided on a daily basis in order to be normal, well-behaved, healthy, and happy dog. Now, in the past, in you know, in the years, you know, 10 years ago, not 10 years, 100 years ago, 75, 70 years ago, 50 years ago, life was different than today. Even looking back to 10 years ago, five years ago, life was different. I didn't have this opportunity to connect with you five years ago. I mean, I could, but it didn't have the we didn't have complete perfect technology that I could do this. Five years ago, we couldn't do certain things that we used to do. We're doing now, and ten years ago, fifty years ago, uh, twenty years ago, hundred years ago, life was different for humans, including dogs. Dogs were supposed to live with humans, with humans, by humans, uh, and do side by side, live, work, live and work side by side. That means the reason we bred dogs 
was because of this relationship that we have ha and had with dogs side by side living together. And that was natural, that was normal for dogs, that was normal for humans to have a dog, you know. I remember watching uh, videos and also pictures from 100 years ago, 200 years ago even. There are some pictures if you research. You'll see that dogs have always been with humans, by humans, near them, right? And it was natural for humans to have a dog by them, by themselves, and dogs living with humans. So it it is something that is naturally built uh, as a automatically, uh, and we have dogs and humans living together for hundreds of years, and all of a sudden, in our urban lifestyle, in our current lifestyle that we have, which is uh, living, you know, uh, in a city and working eight to 10 hours a day, uh, and then coming home and wanting to, you know, go to our gym and then going to our games and it's game night. We want to watch the game. We want to hang out with friends or family and dogs are kind of put aside. Right? When you put a social animal like that who's been bred in a way and designed to live side by side with the human, and all of a sudden you're putting this dog aside, of course we're going to help those dogs to develop behavioral issues. Now I'm not saying that this is the reason why we have so many dogs with behavioral issues, but it is one of the reasons because dogs are social animals. They need socialization. They need exercise. They need care. They need pro proper form of training all every day. Proper amount of affection, and all these can put layers and layers into uh, helping a dog to become to that level that is so stressed, so frustrated, so unnaturally uh, treated that they develop bad behaviors. And these bad behaviors are due to stress because we are not providing them uh, their daily essential needs. So I would lo look at it in a way that we need to have our facts checked and reality checked. Are we able to have a dog? Are we ready to have a dog? Am I, like the reason I have dogs is because I work in an environment that allows me to have dogs. Uh, you know, I have my own doggy daycare, I have my own business, I can bring dogs, I can have 10 dogs if I wanted to, but I only have two at the moment. I always have two for now, but in near future, uh, I may have 10 dogs at the time. But at the moment, I only have two. But I could have as many dogs as I wanted because I'm, I know what to do and my lifestyle is, uh, is helping me to have dogs. But if you are a person who's going to be working eight, 10 hours a day, six to 10 hours a day, and then you have busy life, you want to go to the gym, you want to do this, you want to do that. And then on the weekend, you want to do weekend chores, you want to go traveling here and there, you want to go do this and that. Obviously, your lifestyle is demanding you not to have a dog. And the reason you want to have a dog, because I usually say you want to have a cake and eat it too. You can't have it. You can't have what exactly you want. Dogs are not just objects uh, to have whenever we need them and put them aside. You know, I have clients who are um, who work uh, uh, every day. They bring their dogs every day to our daycare. And... They are, in my opinion, you know, they, they have the option of spending, you know, financially, they are capable of spending money on bringing their dogs to daycare because they're thinking we can't leave our dogs home alone. And especially like now that we, they are, this, for example, these clients of mine, they are working from home, yet they bring their dogs to daycare. Not because these dogs are, horrible dogs is because they know and they understand that at home is 
they are working and they can provide uh, full uh, needs of a, their dogs. So the daycare will provide that because they at least there are dogs here. They play, they socialize, they exercise. We work with them, we train them a little bit. We provide them care and we also share affection. So they get their full formula in here, right? Even though they're working from home, but they yet bring their dogs here. Not only just because the dogs are bad, not only because they are they are working at home, not only because they want to provide their daily five essential needs, but also they want to support us too. So that's one of the other reason too. So there are people who can afford having, um, you know, dogs and sending them to daycare or asking somebody to come and take care of them. So if you have that option, then yes, go ahead and get a dog. But if you can't afford sending your dog to daycare or hire somebody to come and take care of your dog and you have a busy life, I beg you not to get a dog. Get a dog when you are ready. Your, when your, your lifestyle is telling you, okay, you can have a dog. But if you are a busy person, busy, you have a busy lifestyle, I suggest you not to get a dog. That was my opening comments today and hopefully it makes sense and helps helps you also to make your decision if you have questions regarding this topic feel free to ask me questions as well and let's get started on answering some questions um elizabeth saying hi sorrow thank you for being here hi uh, elizabeth uh, also we have victoria barros is in the house saying hi hi thank you for being here welcome and happy friday let's get started with training uh, question number one and if you are liking this show liking this video please make sure to hit the thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel so YouTube algorithm and all the YouTube's, uh, you know, technology is going to help me to rank higher so I can help dog owners like you to become educated dog lovers. Thank you for being here. Niva's uh, question is, I'm training my beagle to walk off leash and we have watched all your videos, but she, but she still tries to run away. And then when I call her to come back, she tries to run off thinking I'm going to chase her. So this is a great question. You, you see, when we talk about off-leashing, whether it's a beagle or in general dogs, any breed, I suggest to follow the following <laughs> concept. You don't off-leash a dog until you go through the three steps. Step one is training your dog the basic obedience. Training step two is training your uh, and basic obedience on a leash. Step two, training obedience and uh, training your dog in general uh, on a leash, but on a long leash, longer leash. Step three is training your dog off leash. So step one on a leash, six foot leash. Step two, longer leash, and you get one of those I don't know, 20, 30, 35 feet dishes or rope or whatever. And you start slowly extending the dish to the point that when you're calling, let, let's, the purpose of the, the extending the leash is to see if we have control over our dog or our beagle in a secure form. You don't want it to be off leash because that's what they're going to do. They're going to take off and they're going to think of it as a fun play uh, activity. And if if a dog or a beagle, whenever you off leash your beagle and then your beagle takes off, right? Right away, it takes off. Whenever you off leash your dog and your dog takes off, that's a sign that your dog or beagle is not ready to be off leashed. What that means is we still have to work with that dog. So you start basic, basic obedience on a six foot leash, and then you, you start working on basic obedience on a long leash, uh, start from 
6 to 10 feet and then go to 15 feet and then 20 feet, 25 feet, 30 feet, 35 feet. It starts slowly expanding and expanding and extending the leash, giving more and more freedom. And if you have you reach 35 foot and you ask your beagle to come to you and your beagle comes to you, or when you off leash your beagle doesn't take off, that means it's ready to be trained off leash. Then you have to still train your beagle off leash. What that means is your beagle is off leash, but you're training it still off leash. Yet you're still training it, right? So you have to go through these steps in order to get there. Don't rush. Don't feel bad that you're keeping your beagle on leash. Don't feel bad that you're not giving freedom to your dog. Safety comes first. Safety is number one. Safety security is number one. Then comes uh, freedom and joy and happiness. Safety has to be in your mind the first thing. If your beagle or your dog is off leash and all of a sudden there is a cougar or there is a fox or there is a rabbit or there is a, a man with a stick out there and freaks your dogs out or gets your dog's attention and focus off you and to, the, to that subject and it takes off and gets injured or, or killed then you're going to regret and you never will wish that you had off leash your dog. That's my concern. That's my main concern. Having a dog, I used to walk dogs. I used to take, unfortunately, that this is bad time, bad, bad example, but I used to make mistakes. I used to take uh, 20 dogs and take them off leash to the mountains and walk them. And there were times that I learned the lesson, you know, after a few times that there were dogs who would take off and would go because they get distracted with the smell of a bear pee or poop or, or smell of something, they would take off and would go. And I would look for them for days, two, three days, sleepless nights. I would look for them, I'll search for them. We'll, called the search and rescue to come and help. It was horrible. It was a nightmare. You know, the dog would not that, you know, was either scared of me or not. It wouldn't come back, but it was scared of the, the situation that it was put to. If your dog was, if a dog is in panic mode, they don't hear and see you anymore. They don't think that you're the safe place. So they even run further and further. And there were some cases that a dog got injured, got lost completely. So I don't, I stopped doing that, right? So you don't want to go through those. You don't want to go through those experiences in order to learn the lesson. So it's better to be safe than sorry. So do your part. Make sure that your dog is, or your beagle is fully trained off leash. Now I have a beagle, Harvey. Uh, that one, he is off leash all the time. I can off leash him anywhere, anytime because I have done my part. I have worked with him, and he never, he ne he feels being by me is the best place to be, be, safest place to be. So if you have a dog like that, and I'm at the moment I'm working on Annie to see if I can create that, uh, that ability of. Any also to be in future off leash. I'm not off leashing her yet. The only place that I'll off leash Annie, and I suggest you to do the same. The only place you're gonna off leash your eagle is in a fenced environment, safe and secure, only for play. If your pup, if your beagle is playing, and it's having a good time in a safe environment, let it off leash. If it's not, put it on leash for the next, believe it or not, year. It takes a year to have a dog who's ready to be off leashed. Okay, great question. Teresa, we have an eight week old Lassa. He's biting like crazy and I will and will launch at us to bite. I have watched your videos, but he doesn't respond well. Is he too, is he too young to learn? 
the reason an eight week goes eight weeks old does that there are a few reasons one is stress two is uh their their teething and three number three reason is bite inhibition so let me explain what they are so the reason your puppy eight weeks old is stress is because whenever a puppy comes to a human's world you know it was somewhere else and now is it living with you it will be stressed automatically you want it or not it will be if you provide the best place for your beagle or puppy or your puppy lassa it will still be stressed think of it this way when you're you're at home you're nice and comfortable right when you go traveling you go to let's say jamaica or you go to mexico right you're still stressed even though you're in that environment fun environment you're still stressed because you're not in your regular normal place that your bathroom is not the same your 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 room is not the same your bed is not the same you're still sleeping bad because the bed is uncomfortable things like that right so you still get stressed whether you want it or not whether if it's best place in the world so stress is number one reason whether you want it or not your puppy is going to be stressed for the next few months because it's a new environment and it's new area uh, new routine has to get get used to it and feel comfortable and get comfortable in that environment so it will be stressed and the reason is behaving that way be, behaving that way is because of stress it's stressing and it's uh, lashing out uh, and re releasing its stress uh, using biting. Number two is because they're teething. When puppies are young, they start to teeth. They're replacing the young puppy teeth with old, uh, older teeth, uh, adult teeth. So it will start feeling their gums is going to feel funny. It will feel uh, ticklish and uh, they will have that sensation that they need to release this sensation and they bite. The biting helps them to release the, that uh, sensation. And the three reason is because uh, bite inhibition. This is when I suggest you to introduce your puppy, if possible, to another pup, puppy or another dog who's safe and secure and it plays well with puppies so they can practice this bite inhibition on the puppies and on the dogs rather than on humans. When you allow a puppy to practice this feeling and this um, instinct, it's instinctual behavior as well. When you allow this to practice on humans, they don't know that you're not, not okay. They feel that that's, that's what they're supposed to do and they will do it. So I suggest you to provide uh, chew toys and also other puppies or dogs that they can practice uh, uh, this bite inhibition and biting on them rather than on you. Does it make sense? So you want to make sure that your puppy is has an outlet to release this stress and these feelings and emotions and instincts that it has. So that will help, I guarantee you. Hope that helps. Christine Jones, thank you for being, being here, Christine. Uh, what is the best way to te teach our, your dog to sit pretty? To sit pretty, <laughs> uh, very easy. Um, here's a video. I'm going to share with you a video. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a microphone in front of me. I'm getting used to it. I'm, I keep banging on it. Uh, I'm going to share a video uh, in the chat area. I'm going to call it sit command. Uh, this is for puppies, but you can use the same method for adult dogs as well. So it's in the chat area. It's called sit command. Okay. Uh, it's very simple. You use a, a, a toy. Um, something that your puppy likes or your dog likes i suggest you not to use treats or food uh, and then practice and experiment that with uh, with a toy and teach it to sit 
sit is the simplest command to you, you can teach to a dog or a puppy because they naturally will do it. You don't have to bribe them. You don't have to force them. They will do it naturally. Great question. The DRF3156, I want to thank you for the suggestion you made to my me several previous questions in the earlier live session. Our dog is doing so much better. I thank you for your expertise. You are very welcome, and that is great news uh, to hear that. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit more about what uh, the issue was and what my suggestion was and what kind of a before and after, if you could explain a little bit would be great. That would be great. But I'm glad that my suggestion helped. That means it works. That means uh, a, a lot to me. And uh, it's, a, it's a good um, good to note that I am making a difference. Thank you very much. So Donna Collins, only problem I have with my golden doodle is pulling on the leash. Does well on gentle lead, but he hates it so much. Yeah, gentle lead is is not a good idea or not a good tool to, tool to use because it does hurt them. Uh, it pinches their nose. It causes this discomfort. You know, I see I see many people using it and they use the use it the wrong way. Usually, the 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 top part of the the collar is kind of pinching in here rather than you know it should supposed to be here and it's here and it's you know doing this and it's you know it's just they're not using it properly. First of all. All, everybody that I see is using it the wrong way. Second of all, if your dog is still pulling using that tool, that means it's not working. It's not, it's not the right tool to use. So I can share with you some tips that will help you to um, improve the walks. Okay, so. Number one tip that I always have is don't think of taking your dog out for a walk just because they have to go for a walk and you have to take him for a walk and the walk has to be done uh, even though we're going for a walk and he's pulling on the leash. I'd rather not to go for a walk than having a proper walk. So having a proper walk is much more important than having a crappy walk, right? You know what I mean? So I would emphasize and I uh, put my energy on improving the walk rather than just going for the walk just for sake of the walk. So the way you're going to improve the walk is it starts from the beginning before you get out of the door, right? That's very important. So number one is I want you to calm your golden doodle to level zero before you step out of the door. Level zero, literally zero. So let's say if your golden doodle before going out of the door is in level 60, right, 60, 70, right? I would wait there and you're planning in your mind, you're saying, you know what, we're gonna go for a half an hour walk, right, and come back. You're gonna wait there by the door until your golden doodle goes from 70 or 60 to zero. Just wait there, just stay there, let your dog do its own thing. And then after, let's say, 20 minutes, 25 minutes is going to go from this. After 20 minutes is this. After 25 minutes is this. After 28 minutes is this. Right? I'll go for two minutes walk and come back. Remember, you were going to go for 30 minutes walk. It took your golden doodle 28 minutes to go from this to this. Two minutes walk and come back. 
this waiting and teaching the dog to be calm before going out is more important than the walk. So if today you spend 28 minutes to calm your golden doodle down, tomorrow you're going to spend probably 27 minutes. Next day, the next day 26 minutes. Day after that, 25 minutes. A week from now, you're going to spend calming your dog from this to this, maybe 10 minutes, five minutes. You you spend invest a lot more time in the beginning of the walk than during the walk. So improve this concept, improve this state of mind first before you in, introduce it to the next level. If you can control and calm your dog down in the house before getting out, how are you supposed to control your dog outdoors? No tool is going to help you. No gadgets, nothing is gonna help you unless your dog says this human wants me to calm down before going out. And if you calm your dog down, and then you step out of the door, you're going to see different energy, you're going to see different behavior, different, you're going to get different results. Yes, you're still going to have some challenges outdoors. But because you have invested tremendously on the beginning of the walk, you're going to get better results, it's going to be easier. Also, you don't need to pinch your dog's nose, you don't have to bother it, you don't have to stress it more, you don't have to stress yourself. It, it'll be a little bit be easier for you to address the walking, things that happened during the walk. Now, during the walk, because you have invested so much on calming your dog down during the walk, now if you address some of the behaviors and issues that you're dealing with, it will be easier for you and your dog is going to respond to you faster and better. So what I want you to do is invest a little bit more time um, in learning and training your dog. So to support what I just explained, I'm going to share the following videos. I want you to go and watch all of these videos in this series. Uh, they are short videos, but each video gives you what you need to do and what the steps should be, right? So I call it the video that I shared in the chat area. It's called Walking Tutorial, okay? So watch all those videos and then learn, practice, but remember, an excited dog cannot be walking out of the door. Okay? Hope that it helps and great question. Elizabeth Crusoe, uh, I can't remember if I asked this before. My 10 month old mini poodle won't go up in the, in the stairs no matter what I do to entice him. Um, poodle. The problem with some dogs and some breeds is that they they are not supposed to be walking up the stairs. You know, you're not supposed to let your puppy to walk up the stairs up to certain age. I would say, like, you know, especially lot, big breeds, large dogs, large breeds, you're not supposed to uh, let them walk up the stairs. Uh, not because uh, it's hard for them, first of all, it's because it causes a lot of uh, damage to develop in their um, physical and structure, in their bones and bone structure. A 10 month old is still growing up and still um, developing. So what you wanna do is invest in playing games and teaching it to be comfortable to get up stairs uh, one of the games that I would suggest to play is let me, I'll get you some games that you can play with your um, puppy uh, that you can improve this, um, this issue, okay? So uh, I'll name these uh, videos that I'm going to share, games. So play these games 
Um, now I'm sharing a, a, a video on a game that it uses table, but you can use any low um, height uh, chair or table or whatever, just to get your puppy to play with you and get comfortable getting up things, right? And once you do that, then I would, I would say in near future, it'll have an easier time to get on um, um, up the stairs, up and down. And don't force it, like, you know, don't, you don't have to let it go up and down the stairs uh, too often, maybe one or two stairs would be okay for now. Christine Jones, how do I stop leash aggression towards other dogs? This is a good question too. Uh, I love to talk about this topic and I have made a video about it. Um, there are three things that happens. In general, there are many reasons that causes a dog to have leash aggression. Uh, but the main reason that a dog has leash aggression is because of stress. Now you're going to say, what kind of stress? What is the reason my dog is stressed? There are many reasons, simple or also complicated reasons that can cause a dog to get stressed. A simple thing like, you know, you change your dog's bed location. You moved it from there to there. That can cause your dog stress. They're sensitive animals. Maybe a major situation also has happened in your life. Let's say a family member has left or has, has moved in. Things like that can cause stress in dogs. Everything, every little thing can cause stress in your dog. Your dog may be hearing some weird noise every day that is bothering it and that can cause stress. So every little thing can cause stress in your dog. So that's one of the reasons why your dog is stressed and is and is reacting uh, when it's on the leash. The leash aggression is an outlet for the dog to release that stress. Now, any, every dog can choose or select different form of outlet. Some dogs, they dig a hole in the yard. Some dogs, they want to kill other dogs and animals. Some dogs, they bark all day. Some dogs, they chew on things. You know, that those are outlets or ways of a dog expressing its emotions and also releasing its, its uh, negative energy, negative emotions. So leash aggression happens is because of uh, allowing a dog to release its stress. So it's not that the leash is causing the stress. It's the, the outcome of being on the leash. So when you are uh, attaching a leash on a dog and you're putting it in a situation that causes stress, let's say other dogs may be causing stress in your dog. Maybe being in, a, in the park, it causes the dog to get stressed. Maybe in the being around and surrounded by dogs, it causes your dog to get stressed. So just because your dog is on a leash now, your dog has two choices. It can either, it can't run away, it's stuck on a leash with you, or also it, it, it can't go and take care of them. You know what I mean? It can go and kill them, <laughs> right? So it's stuck. It's stuck in that leash limits. So what it does, it, it, it releases its stress. It says, I can't run away. I can't do anything. So I'm stuck here. So uh, it gets more stressed. And the reason this all, ha all this happens is because your dog is in a way disconnected from you. It's not getting cues from you. It's not learning what it needs to do by you. What it does, it it makes it feels that the dog, your dog, is feeling that when I get in this situation, you are not helping me. 
you're not giving me any cues, you're not telling me what to do, you haven't told me until now what to do. So uh, this is what I'm gonna do, right? So there are many ways to help a dog to get over this behavior. Uh, one of them is reducing the stress level of a dog. Again, find out what, you know, you don't really have to dig in to find out what is causing your dog to become stressed, understand this. If you're not providing your dog's daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, here's the formula, exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection, your dog is stressed, automatically will be stressed. You're saying my dog it doesn't, it doesn't like other dogs, I can't do socialization. You have to help your dog to improve his social skills. How do you do that? You train it. You use training to improve the social skills. How do you get started on training? By providing proper amount of exercise. Provide exercise, it will help you to be able to train your dog. It will help you to give cues and help your dog using training to socialize your dog and then share care as well and then affection so i would i would blindly guess that you're you're sharing too much affection with your dog as well and you're spoiling your dog could be that too those things can also cause uh, stress too much affection, you know. I know it sounds silly, but when you share affection with a dog, for example, at the wrong time, at the wrong place, at the with the in the right state of mind of a dog, you think you're doing good to your dog, but you're causing actually more harm emotionally and mentally to your dog. That's because your dog doesn't need that, doesn't need affection at that moment. It needs maybe a play session. It may need training session, it may need mental stimulation. It doesn't need affection. Affection is a tool that humans use to heal each other. In this tragedy that is happening all over the world, everything that we do is surrounded by affection. We cheer each other, we help each other, we get positive, we share affection with others, that works with humans. It's a good thing to do that. Yes, I understand in, it's very positive to do that with humans and in human society, but with dogs in a human society, it doesn't work. It causes actually negative, uh, to have a negative effects on your dog, emotionally, psychologically, mentally. When you think that you share affection at the at the time that you think your dog needs affection. So my best suggestion would be, whenever you feel that you need to share affection, do the opposite. Instead of sharing affection, do something else. Control yourself, control your uh, emotions and your feelings to share affection with your dog at the wrong time. Okay. And also watch the video that I'm sharing in the chat area. I did a video actually recently about leash aggression and it's called leash aggression in the chat area, the, the link. So watch that too. I talk about this topic a little bit more. The DRF3156, jumping on people when entering house, stay command and allowing us to exit with her staying until okay command, playing hide and seek other games to simulate her mentally. Okay, so these are the things that you have been practicing with your dog, and this is why you're getting good results. That's fantastic, that's awesome to hear and see that you're getting results. And these are very simple things that every dog owner can do and practice with their dogs. You know, jump, if your dog is jumping on people, teach them sit and stay. You know, replace that jumping with sit and stay. Simple, simple task that you can teach a dog uh, and replace it with, uh, replace an unwanted behavior with a wanted behavior. And, you know, saying okay and playing games with your dog to stimulate them mentally and um, even physically is the best thing that you can do to a dog. It 
it makes them not only be happy, it, it makes them to fall in love with you even more because you are taking time to play with them. You are taking time to care with them instead of sharing affection at the wrong time. There you go, playing games. All right, next one is from Cat. Why does my dog throw himself down in the grass <laughs> and drag himself? He does this in strangers' yard <laughs> while on walks. Throw himself down in the grass and drag himself. I think I know what you're saying. It, it probably it's hot out there, and uh, yeah, we, we call it shimishimi. Uh, my dog does that too. When uh, and Jonah used to do that too. Jonah, my previous uh, vegan, um, we called it soldier soldier walk too. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get the scent up. There are a few reasons that this happened. One is because uh, it's hot. So they are dragging their chest uh, to cool off. Uh, that's how they cool off. Grass is cool, it cools them off. The other reason they're doing that shimmy shimmy and uh, rolling in the grass and stuff, it's to get a, you know, it, they just feel good. It just feels good. Uh, it cools them off as well and scratches the, the place that they can't scratch. Uh, but you're not talking about scooting, right? They're not scooting their bum. Your dog is not scooting its bum. If it's scooting its bum, that means, uh, just a side note, yeah. uh, if, if, if your dog is scooting and it's scooting its bum on the grass or ground, is because the anal glands need, need to be expressed or squeezed out. Uh, they do that to squeeze the, the sac that they have by their anal. And the reason they usually do that is because it's full. And the reason it's full is because the food that they're eating is not squeezing, uh, it's not helping it to squeeze that sac. So your dog probably is lacking um, fiber or things like that. I suggest to give uh, raw bones in cases like that to uh, what happens, they chew on raw bones and this, Fi uh, these fibers from the bones uh, create these balls, hard shell balls, and they squeeze the that sac as they exit the body. So that's a, another solution for that. But in general, if your dog is just uh, dragging himself on the grass and stuff, it's just cooling off, it's having a good time, it's having fun. I wouldn't worry. And also they want to spread their scent, yes, their body scent on the grass. And, also and they want to grab uh, the scent that is on the grass, on themselves, and also give away the scent, their own scent. There are so many reasons that they do that. And the last question today is from Elizabeth Corso. Uh, me again, why does my 10 month old mini poodle keep trying to rip the bed I bought him? When will, when will he stop? <laughs> um, very good question. The reason a dog does um, rip or damage their bed is due to um, stress. Simply stress. You will see me talking about dogs being stressed a lot because 99.5% of bad behaviors are of our dogs is, re is related to stress, just like humans. The reason we have health issues and um, problems with behavioral, uh, you know, ourselves, we have problems, behavioral <laughs> problems ourselves is because of stress. Uh, so it does causes cause stress in dogs as well, um, uh, negative effects. It does cause dogs to have negative negative effects. And one of the ways, again, I said earlier, you know, stress can cause dogs to express their stressfulness with certain behaviors. One do on a leash aggression, some do digging. Your dog has decided to destroy it. It's bad. It's telling you. It's having a conversation with you that it's stressed. And again, 
I think the reason most dogs are stressed is because dog owners, they don't provide their dogs daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Most dog owners focus on providing a lot of affection and a lot of good care, and not so much of the other three, which is exercise, training, socialization. When you don't provide those three plus care and affection, you will cause your dog to become stressed. And your dog is just basically telling you that it's stressed. It's, it's, um, it's not feeling happy. It's feeling something is stressing it. Could be emotional, could be mental, but in general, the reason when I say emotional, mental, emotional is because uh, let's say a, a family member left the house or came into the house that emotionally affects your dog mentally if your dog is not stimulated mentally that will cause your dog to have stress as well so emotional mental activities and uh, stressors can cause your dog to develop this kind of behaviors and the simplest way is to provide your dog or puppy um, it's daily needs, five essential daily needs, exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. So bed issue. So I'm going to share with you a video. I call it the bed issue. It's in the chat area. Please watch that too uh, to get more information about this. Uh, not scooting bomb, just the rolling and such in yards. I'm in Texas and he's a... PYR, so he's probably hot. It's embarrassing. Yes, uh, so that's the reason. Yeah, it is hot, so they're trying to cool off. Definitely. Uh, deep seeing my dog breathe, breathing, bre breathing stuck sometimes while playing. What symptom is it? My dog breathing stuck sometimes while playing. Are you? I, I, I don't understand the question, but I think your dog is not breathing properly when it's playing. Um, you may want to check with the vet. Uh, there might be, um, yeah, maybe it's too hot or is playing too hard. Um, so if that's that's it, I would suggest to calm it down. Um, if it's a like health issue, you may want to check with the vet. Dog life, I have a Husky and two Jack Russell. They are overweight, but they are improving. One of them is eating his poop. Um, the reason, uh, you know, when a dog, when dogs are overweight, uh, that means one, they're stressed, two <laughs> uh, is that their digestive system is not working properly as well. They're not able to digest what they're eating. That may be because the food that you're providing is not digesting properly. And that causes them to have, to lack certain nutrients that they need to get from their food that they're eating and they don't get it. Therefore, they eat poop to see if they can get that nutrients from that poop, unfortunately. So that's one of the reasons why they eat poop. Uh, now, to solve this problem, uh, what I would suggest is uh, change the diet um, and also improve the diet, right? Uh, so the way I'm going to help you with this issue is I'm going to share with you a video. I'm going to call it Lose Weight. and it's in the chat area. Please watch that. I cover three steps, three parts that you need to address in order to not only help your dogs to lose weight, but improve the life in general. And Sabre dog is saying, ha ha, my dog causes me to be stressed. <laughs> yes. So a stressed dog will cause the human to be stressed and the human gets stressed, the dog gets stressed as well. So it's a, 
it's a never ending story. It's, it's one is feeding the other, right? Dogs are mirroring us humans and humans uh, are not uh, helping dogs to be distressed. So your task in general, here's what I want you to get from this, at least today. We talked about stress a lot. Um, if you feel that your dog is stressed, you may want to change something or some things in your lifestyle, in your life. If you improve that, so dogs are good signals to us that something is not right. We need to improve something. They're the barometer, yes. They're telling us there's something wrong with us. If we live properly to the fullest, our dogs are going to be behaving normal. But if we live a life that is unbalanced, unhealthy, and not to the fullest, we get stressed. Our dogs feel that and mirror our behaviors, our emotions to tell us that, hey, you need help. And if you need, if you can, if you help, I need your help too. So dogs are telling us what we feel and how we feel. If your dog is stressed and it's causing you stress, then it's time to change something. Something or some things you want to change to improve your life and your dog's life. If you could do it for your dog's sake, that would be even better. But do it for you so your dog can benefit from you too. All right. Great to have you all here today. I really enjoyed this session. Next time, we'll meet again on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come join me and let's talk about dogs and let me help you to become an educated dog lover. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. And make sure to hit the like button as well. So again, YouTube algorithm can figure this out that we, the, the, the video and the channel is doing good so I can help more of dog lovers around the world to become educated dog lovers. Hope you enjoyed the show. Um, so dog life is follow up is saying I actually watched that video a long time ago and followed it it is improving my dog's weight but what kind of food should I give them to make him stop um, I would suggest try feeding uh, you know a raw diet maybe add some vitamins as well maybe vitamin E um, an egg, uh, you can add an egg to the food, their food, um, raw eggs. Um, you know, turmeric is a good uh, supplement. Ginger is a good supplement. Things like that, natural stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link uh, of what I feed my dog. I'll show you that. Hold on. Um, I'll, sh I'll share with you what I feed my own dog. Um, there we go. Uh, you can get a get an idea of what I feed. And maybe try to mimic this as much as possible, as close as possible. Okay, I called it what I feed. Uh, uh, so check that out. Check that uh, uh, link and see if you can make those changes. Adam saying, okay, great. See you next Tuesday. Thank you very much all for showing up and, and joining the channel and subscribing and hitting the link button, uh, like button and also the uh, bell icon. And I'll see you um, on Tuesday. Thank you. Take care and have, a fun, have, have fun with your dog.